Hello there. My name is Jonathan Chandler, and I'm uh, interested in being on the a lone story on the History Channel. And we're gonna walk around here today a little bit. <clears throat> this is outside my home in Southern Virginia. I I really enjoy uh, the idea of that surviving by yourself uh, on your own wits. Um, I'm gonna take you around here and let you see the little projects I've been working on. Here behind me is a log cabin. This particular project is made out of mostly reclaimed wood. Uh, the top part, of course, is new. But uh, the bottom here is all reclaimed timber from a tobacco barn. Um, here in Southern Virginia, the tobacco barns have gone out of favor. They've gone to using metal commercial tobacco barns to cure their tobacco. This was a the old way of doing it. And uh, take you up inside here. And that big log right there and five of its friends I hand hewed myself this year. And that's what took a little bit of time to uh, to get this cabin on the way. We had the other walls up fairly readily. I had to recut some of these notches to make it fit like I wanted to. But uh, this is the second log cabin of this style I have built. Uh, I built one in, on my place in Virgilana on 30 acres. It's a hollow hunting camp. But uh, basically the same style. The upstairs is different. Um, but uh, I love to work with my hands. I love to learn the old way of doing things. Uh, this particular notch here is called a barn notch, this style. There's other styles, the Scandinavian notch and there's a, a dovetail notches. But this style is fast and quick. And if I get on the alone story, uh, I'm going to intend to build me a shelter, probably not this elaborate, but at least a log shelter, uh, a hunter style. Uh, trapper shack and uh, be able to to maintain my surroundings a little bit more permanent than uh, perhaps some of the other gentlemen but we put all of these logs up by hand did not use any machinery whatsoever um, it was me and uh, another gentleman helped me with the longest ones here uh, the one cabin I built in Virgilina I put all the logs up but four by myself the top four were were pretty heavy um, and these particular ones that I hand hewn this this time were extraordinarily heavy and I had to get a few more fellas to help me with that but on a smaller version of this they would be shorter and be lighter um, so it would be faster to make it and anyhow this is my little log cabin eventually this uh, hopefully will be Fox Ridge Arms new home where we'll make this into our Farms business. And uh, we're gonna walk around here a little bit and pick us up some material so that we can make a fire today. It's been raining most of the day today, and uh, we'll give it a shot. And all I'm doing is I'm getting, since it's been raining today, hadn't rained in the last hour or so, but I'm just gonna get the tops of this grass. If I can, this is what I prefer. Got a little open ground. This is what I'd prefer to, to get for my bird's nest. This fall grass dries out. And, uh, the tops of it keep dry even when it's raining. You can get out here. A little bit of this. So, right there is what it starts with. And most time what I do, I divide what I got in half, turn half one way, half the other way. <coughs> and then wad this up. Kind of tie it in a knot a little bit. Stick it up in there. 
little. Kind of working a little bit, and that breaks up the fiber. And that's generally what I do for a uh, bird's nest. But I do come back and I'll get me a little green down here. A little lower. Along the bottom a little bit. That gives me a little something to hold to so it won't burn me. Let's go gather up some more stuff. Alright, next thing I like to get if I'm going to build a fire is some dry leaves if I can find them. And uh, I got a place right up here. These dry leaves here work well. Alright, so we got us a few sticks and a few leaves and our bird's nest. We're gonna walk up the hill here in just a moment. Alright, we got our fire making materials here. We're gonna start out with putting a few sticks down here like I've got at the very bottom. <clears throat> it's been raining today trying to keep the fire up off of the ground just a little bit. Those sticks should help keep from getting off fire so so wet uh, uh material so wet so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a few sticks not many and we're just gonna poke them in the ground here kind of make us a fire lay and that's basically something that will hold our fire materials up in the air we're gonna take us some of these leaves Those leaves on it dry was I was I would like those leaves today. It's been raining. Those leaves will do for us, I believe. We got some of this other wool here. So we can get it long enough to burn just a little bit. And I'm bad for not making a big enough bird's nest. I guess I'm lazy. I don't want to pick up no more of the stuff than I have to, but it's better the more stuff you can get in that bird's nest, drier the better. And we'll fluff it up here. Squish, squish it around a little bit and get that stuff fluffed up. See if we can't get it to catch here. And you need to be careful with your hands. If your hands are real, real uh, wet and damp, don't want to work as good either, so we get us our fire. Steel and us a pocket knife. I usually do this with my pocket knife. I use a fire, fire CM rod. This is an old Henry fire CM rod fire starter from uh, Fox Ridge Arms. I'm, I'm an operator of business. It hadn't been raining today, I believe this was coming right on for the second or third one. This is coming down in some way. There we go. It's July, so I don't want a real big fire, so that would get me a fire going pretty easy, I believe. Like I said, it's been a rainy, rainy day, but I do would like a, a shot at this alone story on the History Channel. I believe I can stay there a right good while. Uh, 
I have canoed and hiked and camped all over the United States and Canada. I've gone on the Kenai Peninsula canoeing on an 80 mile canoe trip. And we walked 12 miles back to the truck and we completed that in 36 hours. Hiked in uh, Colorado, Montana, Oregon, canoed in Oregon and Georgia, of course, Virginia, North Carolina, um, and also even as far away as uh, the swamps of Alabama. Um, but usually go on a week-long trip. We'll try to take a week-long trip with it. Sometimes it's been faster than that if we got on a good roll doing or even backpacking even more in particular. You can't take a whole lot of equipment with you to start with. And the more you take with you, the heavier you are, the slower you go. So my policy is to travel light and uh, use the nature for what I can use nature for and uh, pack wisely on our tools and equipment. But as you can see, we could have us a blazing fire here. We've got a pretty, pretty hot one right now. Uh, without much effort at all, picked up a little bit of grass, picked up a little bit of dry leaves. Like I said, it's been raining today. Uh, and I think I could stay out in the wilds and fend for myself for a pretty good time. I've never been in the military, but I was raised on a farm. We always hunted and fished and trapped and raised our own animals to eat. Have been hunting since I was 12 years old. Spent time in the wilderness with grizzly bears and mountain lions and black bears. Uh, never had an issue with any of those. Um, even in Alaska, we, we heard some wolves. We didn't see any wolves, but we heard some wolves. Uh, never really had an issue with any of that. Um, in my opinion, if you do what you're supposed to do, the, the animals will do what they're supposed to do. Uh, some of these gentlemen that's been out there having issues with the animals. I, I'm an agriculture teacher, so I guess I got a little more insight on animals than some people. If you take a tent out in the middle of a cow pasture and you put your tent up and get in it and go to sleep at that night, the cows are gonna come around that tent and smell around it and see what you are, see what's going on, you're new. So if you intend to go out into the middle of the wilderness where there hasn't been any people, hasn't been anybody around, the animals are gonna come around and check you out. If you're not prepared for that, I don't stay on the couch. You, you just got to understand how they, the patterns work. They work in a pattern. They have a territory. If you're going to go in there and take over part of that territory, you got to go in there and take it over. You can't go in there and, and uh, be meek and mild with it. But anyhow, I think I would be a good survivalist. And I love teaching people things. That's what I do for a living. Uh, I would love to teach survival as a, as a career, uh, survival training. And that's one of my goals is to open my own survival school here in Southern Virginia and, and teach uh, wilderness skills and woodcraft and bushcraft. Uh, I make custom knives. I sell firearms. We run a bed and breakfast. I teach agriculture. I'm the president of the Southern Virginia Botanical Garden. And if I was out there, I would, I would start with building me a decent shelter while I still was healthy and strong and I, because if you're going to put us in the same place that they seem to be in now, it's going to get winter time there pretty quick and you're going to need a good shelter to keep warm, more, more so than to keep the animals off of you, uh, keep warm and dry. But anyway, as you can see by my little fire, we're dying down here and I'm going to call that good enough and I will turn it over to the, the producers and folks that select the cast of the History Channel's shows and I thank you and my name is Jonathan Chandler and we're coming to you from Southern Virginia. Thank you very much.